Awesome. My name is Jennifer Fong. I am the Director of Education Products here at IEEE. And uh, IEEE is the world's largest technical professional organization uh, dedicated to advancing technology for the benefit of humanity. Uh, before we begin, I'd just like to note just a couple of quick housekeeping items. Uh, at the bottom of your screen, there are engagement tools that you can use. All of these tools are resizable and movable, uh, so feel free to move them around to make the most of the space on your screen. Uh, note that we do recommend using a wired internet connection to access today's presentation uh, and closing any programs running in the background that could cause issues. Uh, there's no dial in number for this event, uh, so make sure your computer speakers or headset are turned on, the volume's up, so you can hear our presenter. Uh, you can find additional answers to some common technical issues in the orange question mark help tool at the bottom of your screen. Uh, if you have questions for our presenter today, you can submit them through the Q&A widget on your screen. Uh, click the purple Q&A icon at the bottom of the screen. We will answer as many questions as time permits. Uh, if you click the green resources icon at the bottom of your screen, uh, you'll find more information about today's event. You're going to hear about a lot of really great resources here at IEEE, and you'll have direct links to all of them right from your resources tool. Uh, so, uh, and finally, the on-demand link uh, for today's event will be emailed to all registrants approximately two hours after today's session. So our virtual event today is Shaping the Future through IEEE Engineering and Technology Education. Engineering and technology education is crucial to help today's technical professionals meet the challenges they face. So in today's session with 2021 IEEE President Susan K. Cathy Land, uh, she will share how IEEE is leading the way in providing innovative educational experiences around the world and increasing diversity through STEM impacted industry. She's going to highlight a lot of great resources that you can take advantage of uh, right here uh, at IEEE. So many things. Um, I'm very excited to hear the presentation today. So um, one last thing, if you would like to tweet about today's event, you can use the hashtag education at IEEE. And so at this time, I would like to hand it over to 2021 IEEE President, Susan Kathy Land. Kathy. Thank you. Uh, I wanna thank all of you for joining me today. Um, as many of you know, uh, education is extremely important to me. And that's why I'm delighted to be here to share with you some of the many ways that IEEE makes a difference in the world through education and encourage you to uh, be a part of it. Um, next slide. Um, the mission and vision of IEEE is to help us shape the future of technology for the benefit of humanity. And an important way that we do this is through education. Uh, from children who are just being introduced to STEM concepts and developing a love for them to university students who are beginning the pursuit of a mean, meaningful career, uh, to university faculty who are constantly seeking innovative ways to inspire their students through engineering and technology, and to working senior uh, uh, professionals who are dedicated to, and to ongoing professional development. IEEE is a home for lifelong learning and development. Uh, engineers and technologists are working on solutions to many of the global challenges that we are facing today. Infrastructure, sustainable development, COVID-19, energy, universal broadband access, and so many more. Uh, STEM technology education is crucial to help us, uh, not only to solve today's issues, but also to prepare for the challenges of tomorrow. Next slide. We know that to meet the challenges of today and tomorrow, we need global diverse viewpoints and experiences. We need these voices in STEM careers. And that's where IEEE plays a critical role. Our global reach as a membership organization helps us to bring educational experiences to every corner of the globe, increasing the diversity of our industries and the viewpoints that will shape the future. 
our members are working locally in classrooms, presenting through meetings, webinars, and technical conferences, offering articles and videos and podcasts, and the list goes on and on. Every day our members are advancing technology for humanity through education, and this is helping us to meet the challenges of, of the future head on. Next slide. So before we go further, I'd love to know how education from IEEE impacts you. How are you involved in education from IEEE? Which resources are you already using? Uh, so please take a moment to answer the question. How are you involved in education through IEEE? Do you uh, attend educational sessions sponsored by your local chapter or section? Uh, do you take continuing uh, professional education tutorials or e-learning classes? Participate in webinars and virtual events for IEEE? Attend technical conferences? Uh, volunteer in pre-university STEM activities? Participate in educational activities through an IEEE chapter? Uh, serve as a mentor? Uh, have an IEEE mentor? So uh, I think to take the, uh, okay, so there are the results. And it's a little hard for me to see. Okay, so most uh, participate in webinars and virtual events. And then it's pretty, uh, so m people don't have a mentor, but 22% are a mentor. So I just do want to mention that if you're interested in either being a mentor um, or if you want to be a mentor, you can do that by uh, participating to Collaboratech, uh, which is available um, on the launch, uh, front page of IEEE.org. There's a little C at the top right of the, of the screen. Uh, next slide. So it's not only enough to educate uh, working engineers and technologists, uh, we have to start young to help kids understand the importance and possibilities of STEM careers. Our research shows that when students are presented with integrated STEM curricula, that they understand the basic STEM concepts, their basic understanding of STEM concepts is improved. Um, it's, it also shows that their likelihood of entering a STEM profession increases significantly. The STEM students are better prepared uh, to use learned engineering processes when attempting to solve problems in other situations or courses. Students learn and build skills uh, when these basic competencies are applied to a variety of situations, including uh, making room for student innovation and original design. Additionally, research shows that attitudes towards STEM fields improve. Getting students in the earliest grades excited about and comfortable with these topics is the key to increasing access to STEM fields and increasing the STEM workforce on the whole. You know, we should tell kids who have an aptitude for these sciences that career in technologies is a career where they will be in high demand and where they will never lack for opportunities. We should also emphasize that jobs in technical fields will provide for lifelong learning, excitement, and satisfaction. That these jobs will never become routine or boring. Next slide. So why do I care? Um, well, besides what I've previously stated, uh, we owe it to the next generation if we care about technology. Um, and I will say that I remember middle school, and that's my photo there. Uh, I remember hating it. And from my research on kids this age, I can safely share some pretty universal truths that I think everyone learned well in middle school, and some of those are on the slide. Um, from one that is my favorite, uh, and I think you have to embrace to be successful no matter what your stage in life is, that popularity is a state of mind and you can be your own awesome. Um, also from Lucy and Cece's How to Survive and Thrive in Middle School, uh, pick your traveling companions well, ones with the courage and moral fiber to persevere. Uh, for many kids, middle school is like Middle Earth and many kids lack self-esteem they flounder and it's tough for them. Uh, these are the years when we can reach them. Uh, they need to feel included and smart. And this is why early STEM is so critical. We need to try to provide resources for parents and teachers so that they are equipped to reach this particularly difficult and vulnerable age. Our AAA members are doing just that. Uh, and I'll talk more about that in a moment. Next slide. 
High school is, is critical for STEM outreach as well. Uh, this is where kids really start to connect with math and science, and I was no different. Uh, this is when I realized how challenging and empowering uh, uh, science and math could be, what an equalizing force they could be. Uh, if you had the right answer, it didn't matter if you were a jock, the popular kid, or the nerd, you had the right answer. Um, and I give all the credit to my dedicated teachers and, and uh, who uh, taught and inspired me. Um, I can still remember the excitement I felt around learning. And you will see on this slide uh, uh, three of the teachers from my junior year that had a tremendous impact on me. Uh, this is why I'm so impassioned about STEM, uh, about helping teachers and in providing them the tools and support that they need. Uh, also about why I feel it's so important that we try to do our part and support and engage in STEM activities when we have the opportunities. Next slide. Uh, but of course, learning can't stop when we graduate. Uh, those of us in STEM careers know that uh, lifelong learning is essential for career growth and professional development. Uh, IEEE pay, plays an important uh, role here as well. Uh, IEEE is an innovator in providing meaningful educational experiences at every level. Every day, our members meet people where they are uh, where they're ready to learn and support them on their journey of lifelong learning. IEEE members are sharing a wealth of knowledge that brings us uh, all forward together and helps us fulfill an, our mission to advance technology for humanity. It all starts with education. Next slide. So what does this education look like? Um, it takes many forms and it goes far beyond the classroom. From the lesson plans and resources we provide to pre-university teachers, uh, to mentoring, articles, and conferences, from competitions, hackathons, and service learning, to webinars, tutorials, and podcasts. IEEE members, through their chapters, sections, regions, technical societies, affinity groups, and more, are providing a wealth of educational experiences. And while we would be here all day if I tried to tell you about every single one, I do want to highlight some of these. Next slide. So let's start by looking at some of the programs that we have for pre-university students and teachers. Um, remember, our vision here is that youth will see themselves as someone who can improve the world through engineering, technology, and computing. Um, while IEEE volunteers are mem and members are doing so many activities to engage pre-university students, let's start by looking at just a few of these programs. Next slide. So uh, let's start with a new IEEE Volunteer STEM Portal. Uh, the objective of the Volunteer STEM Portal is to leverage IEEE's global community to engage and impact as many students as possible and to increase volunteer and teacher engagement in pre-university science technology, engineering, and math activities. It serves as a centralized volunteer resource for all such activities across IEEE's operating units. And I'm extremely excited to have helped guide the development of the IEEE STEM portal as we are working to empower educators and volunteers to inspire the next generation of tomorrow's technologists today. Um, the portal is a centralized resource for volunteers where you'll have access to a searchable library of STEM programs being run by engineering and technology professionals just like you. It includes activities along with how-to resources to make it easier for volunteers to develop and implement STEM outreach programs. It also provides a place to collect data and to understand the impact the IEEE community has on pre-university students and educators around the globe. The STEM portal gives volunteers a chance to learn from and support one another as they engage in STEM outreach in their local communities. I encourage all of you to look into the portal at tryengineering.org and to see what opportunities exist. Um, I also encourage all of those of you running STEM programs to post your successful programs for other IEEE volunteers to learn from, to share, and to use. 
Together, we can demonstrate the collective impact IEEE is making in inspiring the STEM professionals of tomorrow. Next slide. Um, two other pre-university programs include IEEE REACH and IEEE Spectrum Robots. The IEEE REACH program is a project of the IEEE History Center. Uh, understanding that technology and history are not mutually exclusive subjects. IEEE REACH provides history teachers with free educational resources that uh, situate science, technology, um, and engineering in their social and humanistic context. The program offers inquiry units that include readings, hands-on activities, multimedia sources, and more to include uh, to engage students and to help them explore how STEM fields impact their everyday lives. Uh, and you can explore more about the program at reach.ieee.org. Um, Robots is a product of IEEE Spectrum. Uh, the flagship publication of IEEE, um, and it, it's found at robots.ieee.org. And if you haven't visited it, you should go visit it. It's amazing. It's a website designed to introduce students to the exciting world of robots and uh, robotics engineering, uh, featuring profiles of different robots available today, as well as lesson plans, games, and interviews with uh, roboticists. It's a great resource uh, to get kids excited about STEM while they learn. Uh, the foundation for robots is IEEE Robots app, which has been downloaded 1.3 million times to date, and it's used in STEM programs all over the world. Uh, and again, you can check it out at robots.ieee.org. Uh, next slide. Um, IEEE uh, Eta Kappa Nu, um, IEEE Extreme, uh, Teaching Excellence Hub, uh, Scholarships, uh, all of these are, are associated with university education. Um, IEEE members uh, also impact education at the university level, supporting both students and faculty. Uh, for example, uh, IEEE Extreme is a global challenge in which teams of students um, advised and proctored by an IEEE uh, member uh, um, and often supported by a IEEE student branch compete in a 24-hour time span against each other to solve a set of programming problems. Um, uh, they're very competitive. Uh, IEEE student members learn through participation, making it a fun experience where they can earn prizes. Um, you can find out more about this exciting program at IEEEextreme.org. Another important program for students is IEEE Eta Kappa Nu, uh, the Engineering Honor Society of IEEE dedicated to encouraging and recognizing excellence in IEEE designated fields of interest. Um, offer, they offer educational events such as the Student Leadership Conference, uh, Pathways to Industry webinars, and, and much more. Uh, IEEE Eta Kappa Nu also connects students to industry as they prepare to enter the workforce. Um, I'm proud to be a member of HKN, and I'm inspired when I see this purpose put into action by the HKN student peer advising, exam prep, mentoring, and tutoring programs, and programming activities at each one of the HKN chapters across the globe. Um, IEEE offers many scholarships for students to help them pursue STEM studies and careers. For example, the IEEE Power and Energy Society, a Scholarship Plus initiative um, uh, found at ee-scholarship.org combines scholarships with industry internships that can lead to real jobs after graduation. Uh, the IEEE Foundation is a critical part of our ability to offer these scholarships, and we sincerely appreciate the many donors who give each year to make this important work possible. IEEE also offers educational resources to faculty and one of our newest programs is a collaboration between the IEEE Education Society and the IEEE Educational Activities uh, uh, OU called uh, the Teaching Excellence Hub. This website with an editorial board uh, that has members from around the globe offers informative articles and resources specifically related to the practice of teaching at the university level. And it's designed to help teaching uh, faculty excel in their craft. Uh, they learn new ways of supporting students in engineering and technology education. And you can visit this site at teaching.ieee.org. Next slide. So when it comes to uh, continuing professional education, 
IEEE provides a wealth of resources to help our members grow in their careers. Uh, for example, most sections uh, and regions have education outreach chairs that are regularly organizing lectures and meetings to discuss technical topics of interest with their members. Uh, you can contact your local IEEE section to learn more about the educational opportunities available in your area. Um, I know I've participated in many of these uh, local uh, section uh, events this year. Uh, another exciting way to learn about technical topics is through uh, IEEE technical societies. Uh, many of them offer educational content through webinars, publications, conferences, and more through their resource centers. Uh, this is a great way to learn from society experts around the globe in specific fields of interest. And you can find a list of uh, resource centers on IEEE.org. Uh, click on the Find Your Resource Center button and you can get started looking for that. Uh, many of our members appreciate the opportunity to learn on their own schedules uh, and e-learning courses from IEEE make that possible. Uh, many IEEE groups have partnered to provide e-learning content on the IEEE Learning Network. Uh, and this is found at iln.ieee.org. Uh, this site has um, over a thousand courses covering topics in IEEE fields of interest, and it's a great way to find education from across IEEE all in one place. Next slide. Uh, one last program I want to highlight is the IEEE Mentoring Program. Um, this is an online program that facilitates the matching of IEEE members, uh, and I mentioned it earlier, uh, and it's for the purpose of establishing a mentoring partnership. Uh, I want to share with you a story about one of my first mentors, uh, someone who affected my pro pro professional success uh, in such a way that if she had not been involved in my early career, I probably would not be where I am today. Um, I was working as a computer specialist at Pacific Missile Test Center in Point Magoo, California, uh, when I was asked to go out, when I was about to go out on maternity leave. Um, and she called me and asked me not to quit, but rather to work part time as part of her group, um, to work about 20 hours a week. So uh, this was a time, uh, there was, this was a time before there were like work at home or part-time programs, and this was a pilot program for the Department of Defense. So um, she initiated the work at home pilot program and uh, participated. And my job was to um, review software products and write articles. Um, so uh, she, she said she knew my work, uh, that she believed in me and wanted me to participate. So this was incredible looking back. Right. Um, if she had not done this, I don't know where I would be today. Um, I did take advantage of the program and I did this for about two years. Uh, and the entire time, she was very encouraging. Uh, she provided valuable feedback um, on my work products and she remained a steadfast mentor. Um, I called her a number of years ago. Her name is Doris Malesko and she had retired. And I told her uh, what I had accomplished. Uh, where I was in my career, and I gave her direct credit. I told her what an impact she had on my life and career, and she was very affected. She said that mentoring others had always been a priority for her. Next slide. So why should you consider becoming a mentor? Um, here are a few reasons. Um, it will help you become a better leader. Uh, by working with someone else, you gain fresh perspectives and new ideas. Um, and you can change someone's world. Um, for underserved, underrepresented, and vulnerable populations, mentorship can make the difference in delivering positive STEM education outcomes. Mentoring can help um, vulnerable mentees overcome challenging circumstances, such as lack of positive role models, uh, insufficient access to education, or other uh, financial or societal barriers. Um, not to mention, uh, mentoring can increase STEM student engagement and the rate of completion uh, of STEM post-secondary degrees. As a mentee, your mentor gets to know your strengths and weaknesses um, over, over time, and they can play a critical role in helping you become your best version of yourself. Um, it's one-on-one -on -one education that helps technical professionals develop through collaboration. Participation in the program is open to all members. 
all grades and society affiliates. And to get started, uh, visit your profile in Collaboratech and click Career Services. Uh, once a mentoring partnership has been established, a private workspace will automatically be set up uh, on IEEE Collaboratech. Next slide. So now that I've shared uh, a lot of educational programs with you, um, would you believe that I'm only scratching the surface on what's available? Um, to help you discover the many educational op opportunities that are offered through IEEE, I'm proud to announce we're planning IEEE Education Week, and this event will be held April 4th through 8th in 2022. Uh, you'll be able to find links to educational events and resources from across IEEE on the website, and there will also be lots of opportunities to engage, uh, from games to special offers to a digital badge and, and much more. And uh, we hope you'll join, and, uh, uh, and um, we know it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, this week, in celebration of IEEE Day, we're giving you a preview of Education Week, so you can start browsing some of the educational resources that are available to you. Uh, you can simply visit educationweek.ieee.org to get started. Um, you can sign up to be sent an email uh, uh, that will come and update you as the weeks get closer. Uh, next slide. So there are many IEEE groups that have already started submitting educational resources and events to the Education Week website. I mean, there are lots of partners. And you can see uh, we're just getting started. Uh, if, you, uh, if your IEEE affiliated group has educational events and resources that you would like to feature on the website for Education Week, simply fill out the form on the website. Uh, every IEEE group is invited to partner with us as part of this exciting event, and we'd love to add your group to this list. Next slide. So I'd like to show you a brief video about Education Week. Uh, you can find this video. Are you a professional working in a technical field who is seeking the latest in professional development to help you advance in your career or help you learn about new technologies? Are you a university student or faculty member seeking the opportunity to grow in your field? Or are you looking for educational resources and experiences to encourage the next generation of engineers and technologists? IEEE is your source for all this and more. IEEE offers pre-university STEM, university, and continuing professional education resources for practicing and future engineers and technical professionals all over the globe. From local and regional educational activities, to webinars and online courses, to scholarships and events, and so much more, IEEE offers members the chance to access a wealth of educational offerings. And now, we're making it even easier to find and take advantage of these events and resources. Join the IEEE community in celebrating all of the amazing work that IEEE volunteers and members do every day to promote education at every level. Visit our website at educationweek.ieee.org to browse live and virtual events scheduled for the week and explore the resources and offers relevant for your educational needs. IEEE members receive free and discounted access to many of these events and resources. Not an IEEE member yet? Now is the perfect time to join to take advantage of these benefits. IEEE makes a difference in the world through education, and we invite you to be part of it. Come celebrate with us during IEEE Education Week. So in closing, I want to thank each of you for attending today, and I encourage you to take advantage of some of the many educational opportunities provided by IEEE uh, by adopting a practice of lifelong learning and in turn offering education to others. We help to grow this great profession uh, and provide opportunities for the next generation of engineers and technologists. Uh, as I said in the beginning, there are many challenges facing the world today but by growing our own skills and encouraging those coming behind us, uh, we are truly fulfilling our mission to advance technology for humanity. 
uh, thank you for being part of this mission. So now I'd like to answer some questions, if there are any questions. Thank you, President Lamb. That was very interesting today. We appreciate you sharing all of that. So we do have some questions that have come in through our Q&A tool. If you would like to ask a question, please go ahead and find that Q&A button on your toolbar at the bottom and uh, submit your questions. And uh, I will start with this question that came in. President Land, what is your advice for members and volunteers who want to get involved with STEM outreach? Um, so my, my first uh, piece of advice would be to go and visit the STEM portal uh, that we uh, at tryengineering.org. Um, there are lots of resources that are available there um, and connect with uh, some of the other volunteers that are there. Um, uh, you could also uh, connect with your local chapter or section um, and see if there are volunteers in your local area that are working in, in STEM. I know um, in my local Huntsville section, uh, they're very active in um, STEM activities. Um, so those are that's my uh, advice. Excellent, thank you. Um, so we have another question here. Uh, so somebody is asking about mentoring and there's a lot of in-person events that aren't happening right now. Can you talk a little bit about more about how someone could get involved with mentoring now without in-person? Sure, so Collaboratech. So um, as I talked about in the first part of my briefing and then in, in the later, um, Collaboratech is, is set up ideally for virtual mentoring. And um, if you're not on Collaboratech, it's, uh, it's a platform, it's, uh, it was built uh, in directly responding to uh, a member's request, a AAA membership request for a social networking platform. And you don't have to be a member uh, to be on Collaboratech, but you do need to be a member to be part of the mentoring platform. But you go on collab, uh, go on the IEEE.org landing page, and on the upper right is a C. Click on that, and um, you can sign in with your IEEE login. You know your single sign-on, and then go to your uh, where your information is, right? Uh, and then you can sign up to be a mentor or a mentee. And then you search, um, and you can find a mentor or a mentee. There's a matchmaking process, but it's all it's all set up to be virtual. That's wonderful, thank you. Uh, and there's another question, kind of a follow-up to that. Uh, somebody just started mentoring a junior colleague. Do you have any tips for how to be a good mentor uh, so that you both benefit? Um, so I've, I've been a mentor, I've been a mentee, and um, I, the, my advice is gonna sound a little strange. My advice is don't try to make them into a carbon copy of yourself. Right. Um, look for um, look at their strengths and weaknesses, um, and and um, you know try to work with them to emphasize their strengths and improve their weaknesses. Um, I think sometimes a lot of mentors try to make their mentees into carbon copies of themselves, and that's not really the point of being a mentor. Great advice. Thank you. Um, we also have a question, a couple questions come in. People are wondering how to get more involved with their sections, how to find local branches, chapters, and so forth. What's the best way for folks to do that? Um, so there's a locator on the IEEE.org website um, where you can find your local, more information about your local uh, chapter or section. And um, uh, I think it might even be called locator, but uh, that's what it used to be called. Um, but you can find your local, the chair, uh, the, all the points of contact at the local area uh, and how you can reach out to them and email them. Excellent. And that's Thank the best you. way. And if you have trouble finding that, uh, email me at skland at, at uh, IEEE.org and I'll get you in touch with the right folks. Excellent, thank you so much. Um, another question that came in, um, this sounds like a working professional, someone, uh, you may relate to this, having a lot of work and personal commitments um, and with a lot going on, it can be hard to fit in professional development. Do you have any tips? 
Um, so, uh, yes. All right. So when I first started, so my work, I equate my volunteer activities with IEEE to professional development um, and uh, not just taking a course or that kind of stuff. And they're all great, right? So you can take some training courses and that's professional development or improve your soft skills by, you know, uh, presenting at a conference or that kind of thing or writing a paper. Um, but when I started volunteering for IEEE, and I volunteered for IEEE for three years before I became a member um, working in standards, um, uh, because you don't have to be a member if you're a member of a working group. You don't have to be an official member of IEEE. Anyway, um, so I had two small children. Uh, they were uh, three and five, and they were 17 months apart. So I had very, and I was working as a programmer some nights till one and two in the morning. So I had very little time, right? So my goals um, were were very selfish. Um, they were to find out more about these software and systems engineering standards so that I could improve my life and the lives of my programming teams, right? So the, I set my goals very small and um, basically to obtain the technical knowledge I need to in, improve my condition. Um, so you need to look and see sort of what IEEE has to offer. If you're interested in, in, in a specific technical area, look at the societies and councils. And um, if you're interested like in computers, computer society or broadcast engineering, there's a broadcast engineering society, power and energy, right? So take a look at the different societies and councils if there's a specific area of interest or look at some of the conferences you know, set goals that are appropriate for where you are right now. And that may change, right? So then you can change your goals and expand your goals um, as you have more free time. But um, that's what I always tell people is I, I didn't always volunteer at the level I am right now. That's great. Thank you. Good advice. Um, we have another question here. I'm not an IEEE member. Can I still participate in some of these opportunities? Right. So like I just said, um, so I, as I said, I, I always tell people you, you can volunteer and be part of IEEE and you don't have to be a member. You know, um, you should feel welcome at IEEE activities without being a member. Um, I was for three years before I became a member. Um, you can participate in standards working group activities without being an IEEE member and without being a member of the Standards Association. Um, you can participate in a lot of our technical uh, activities without being, you can go to conferences without, you get a discount if you're a member. Um, but there's lots of ways you can, you can go to section meetings and chapter meetings, all kinds of stuff. Um, I joined IEEE and the Standards Association and have been a member for almost 30 years because I wanted to ballot on the standard I was working on. So, um, you know, uh, attend activities, attend chapter meetings, section meetings, you know, try us out and see if you like us. Um, but yeah, there's lots of things you can do. Um, but I tell people don't feel pressured to become a member, uh, but please volunteer and please uh, join our activities. Great, thank you. Um, here's another one. Uh, do you have any programs to introduce STEM to middle school students? As a volunteer, how could I participate in this type of program? Thank you. Um, so we're rolling out our STEM portal and there are lessons plan. There are lesson plans that are posted that are targeted at that age. So you could go and look and see if there are some that are interesting to you. Now we did just roll out this program, this Tri Engineering Portal, in January. Uh, it is growing. You know the content is growing. Um, there, uh, so go look and see if there's something there that interests you. And like I mentioned before, see if your local chapter or section uh, uh, is doing uh, local. Uh, stuff with middle school. I know, like I said, in Huntsville, lots of activity. Um, so uh, I've been, I've done stuff with middle schoolers at A&M. Um, uh, so um, th that's sort of the best. If you want to do stuff locally, check with your local chapter or section. And if they're not, you could start some of your own partnering with maybe some local industry. 
And I will just remind everyone that all of the links to the STEM portal and other uh, resources that we've talked about today are all available in the resources section on your screen. So you can go ahead and you don't have to remember all the URLs. You can just click them and get to what you need to. And those will also be available in the replay of this presentation. So thank you. Um, so here's another one. Great presentation. Thanks. Uh, many of the programs you talked about today are US based. What would you recommend for a UK or a global member? So they're, uh, they're, the Tri Engineering is global. Uh, we have lesson plans from all over the world. Um, uh, the, uh, they're not US based. So I'm sorry if I gave that impression. The e learning resources are not, they're global. Um, uh, the, the, so I can't think of one that I mentioned that is US based. So um, <laughs> I'm sorry if I gave that impression. I'm trying to think of one that might be US based. Uh, uh, even HKN is not US based. So, um, so um, they're all global. Agreed. Thank you. And yes, if you go and head and take, a lot of times you'll be able to write from the websites, um, take advantage of those programs and see what works for you. So please do check them out. Thank you. Yeah, maybe, maybe it was my Southern accent from the US that <laughs> made it seem that way, but <laughs> they're definitely not. Uh, my apology. Thank you. Um, so someone is asking, can I take a part-time opportunity in technical review without being a member? I'm not sure what that one would be for. Um, so we have a website called, uh, it's, um, it's a volunteer portal. So you can, um, if you're interested in volunteering, um, and I'm not sure you have to be a member or not. You may have to be a member. Um, so we have an, I think you have to be a member. We have a new portal for volunteers. Um, I'll have to check it out um, and see if you have to be a member or not to volunteer. I may work to get that changed. Um, yeah, that would be a good way to get people involved. Um, so a technical reviewer for a conference, I'm not sure if you can review papers without being an IEEE member. Um, I think you have to be. I'm not sure, I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that. It's been a while since I've been a, not been a member. <laughs> Thank you. Um, or we, do have an, we do have another question here. Um, my IEEE Society is involved in education, but I didn't see their logo on your slide. How can I get us uh, included in Education Week? Would you like Yay. me to take that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you take it and tell them where to go fill out the form. Absolutely. There is a link right on the educate. There's a link in your resources section right over to the Education Week website, educationweek.ieee.org. Uh, and you'll see that there is a place to submit an event. Uh, and there you can submit something live going on the week of Education Week or resources that are available all the time. And uh, we are happy to add those to the Education Week website. And we invite you to go ahead and submit them. We, I think we have about 60 uh, participating IEEE units today, and that number seems to grow every week, So we, that, which is thrilling. So please let us know what you're doing. Um, and I think that may be the end of the questions. All right, well, I'm right. I'm taking a note about the volunteer portal to see if we can open that up to non-members or if it's open or not. Okay, great. That's a, that would be a great idea. <laughs> if I can find a pen. <laughs> well, while you're getting your pen, I would just like to thank you very much, President Land, for taking some time to be with us today to share all of these exciting opportunities that are available across IEEE. Uh, it's been a delight to have you. And I will say that there was one uh, comment in here where somebody said, uh, I'm glad that Susan Land is the IEEE president and CEO. Good news for the young, later, young ladies who aspire to do great things. Uh, I think well, that's... thank you for the kind comment. Thank you for the opportunity. It's a privilege. Uh, so thank you everybody for joining us today. Uh, the recording will be emailed to you in about two hours, and we're so delighted that you were all here today. Check us out at educationweek.ieee.org. Thank you.